Queensland. Thank you. I call the member for Burdekin. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I rise to speak in support of the amended motion as moved by the member for Glasshouse. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, there's absolutely no question that this Palaszczuk Labor government has no interest in building dams in this state. And there's no better example than Rookwood Weir. This government will do and say anything to avoid making a commitment to build a dam in this state. And I find it extraordinary that the Premier can find millions of dollars to bring Dora the Explorer to the state, but can't find the money to build a dam. A dam that's going to create jobs, a dam that's going to create economic prosperity for central Queensland. A dam that's going to provide water for Rockhampton, for Gladstone, for Livingston. A dam that will provide water to the Gladstone... Uh, uh, order. One moment, Member for Burdekin. Uh, member for Stafford. You don't need to be debating across the chamber with the member for Gregory. Member for Gregory, I have told you several times, you are now warned understanding orders. I call the member for Burdick. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. A dam that will provide water to the Gladstone Area Water Board for customers and a dam that will provide water for agricultural development. Well, it would have provided water for agricultural development, but for the fact that the vegetation management legislation introduced during the last sittings of Parliament which has put paid to that. Mr Deputy Speaker, a dam without land clearing is akin to putting a lolly jar in front of a kid and saying they can't touch them. The fact of the matter, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that the federal LNP government committed $130 million to this project in 2016, at a time when the total cost of the project was $260 million. So they actually contributed their 50 per cent of share of the cost. Because of the delays by this dithering government, that cost has ballooned by $92 million. And now they have the audacity to come into this place and call on the federal government to stump up an extra $46 million. Let's fast track to 2018. And thank goodness we have some committed federal members in the federal member for Capricornia, Michelle Landry, and the Rockhampton Bay Senator, Matt Canavan, because they have committed to building this dam. Unlike those opposite, Order. unlike those opposite, the LNP at both state and federal level are resolute in their determination to see this project go ahead. The Queensland business case is now with Infrastructure Australia being vetted, as is required by Commonwealth law for any investment over $100 million. And that business case clearly demonstrates that we must invest in water infrastructure or risk running out of water in central Queensland. It's a bit rich for this Labor government to come in here tonight and continue to play games with Rookwood Weir instead of acting like grown-ups and cooperating with the Commonwealth to get the job done. Queensland Labor is dragging its heels on this project, a project, I might add, that the LNP committed to building during the recent election. And can I say, we understand how important that dam was and we would have had it started if we'd have been elected at the last election. Last month, the Minister for Resources in Northern Australia, Matt Canavan, said, and I quote... Order. Order, members. Call the member for Burdekin. And I quote, we have already taken steps to have Infrastructure Australia review the Queensland State business case for Rookwood, which is a requirement for all projects worth over $100 million. We expect this process to only take a couple of months. We only received the Queensland business case recently, but I know that Michelle Landry, Ken O'Dowd and myself are as keen as mustard to get this project off the ground. So no hold-ups from that end, Mr Deputy Speaker. But isn't it interesting that last month, that's right, three weeks ago, this government finally provided the information to Infrastructure Australia for the Rookwood Weir business case, who in turn, surprise, surprise, requested further information because the Queensland Government did not meet their assessment framework requirements. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, for the Minister to come into this House tonight and accuse the Federal Government of delays and not holding up their end of the bargain is nothing short of hypocritical. Uh, one moment, Member for Burdekin. Uh, all members in the Chamber, there is far too much audible conversations happening. Finding it difficult to hear the Member from Burdekin. A number of members have already been warned. We don't want to add to the list. I call the member for Burdekin. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And to demonstrate how hopeless this crowd are at putting together a properly researched and cogent argument 
for funding, Infrastructure Australia said there was insufficient detail on how the benefit cost ratio was calculated. So, Minister, instead of coming into this place and trying to score cheap political points, how about you get your own house in order and provide the economic data that is needed to properly assess the business case? Central Queensland needs this project to go ahead. They need the jobs and the economic prosperity that will come with it. And the federal government has shown by its actions that it is more than willing to work with the state to get this project moving. So, Minister, the Commonwealth Government is committed to this project. Are you?